All right, uh, I got quite a bit of viewership on this um, on this particular video that I did. Um, it was about this crystal oscillator uh, that is uh, 177.55 um, megahertz. Very, very old school. So it's really nice because we can poke around in it and do things with it and stuff. So uh, there was a lot of debate on what this crystal was. Um, you can't make a 177 megahertz crystal that I know of. You have to make a, uh, a harmonic. You have to make a lower frequency and then use a harmonic. And people were wondering if it was the third harmonic or the ninth harmonic or the seventh harmonic or whatever it was. That's been an odd one, but uh, I, had, I had guessed it was a third. And um, uh, we will see how this thing is constructed. So I'm gonna do a reverse engineering on the oscillator section and we will then probe it and see what's going on. And I'll try to give you some insight of, of how this circuit works, okay? So, uh, the first thing we're gonna do is turn it on. And so you can remind yourself. So this is, remember, a negative, uh, negative five volts. There was some discussion on why it's negative five volts and um, Somebody said, you know, it's negative 5.2, and they said, well, that's what Echel uses. And so maybe it was in a system that was using Echel, and, and uh, that's, that's cool. Echel uses a negative voltage for noise reasons and stuff that I'm not going to get into. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, let me get the scope set up, and we'll take a look at the output. Yeah, there we go. We have a beautiful sine wave. And let's go ahead and turn on the counter. And it is 177.58 megahertz. Very nice. Um, so, how does this thing work? So, before we get into the circuit, I want to tell you something about crystals, all right? So, uh, like I said, it, it's using a harmonic of the crystal. Well, how does that work? So, let's go over to the other analyzer and I'll, I'll show you a little bit about crystals. So, I have a uh, 6 megahertz crystal in here and it's centered at 6 megahertz and it looks like a typical crystal thing. It's got series and parallel resonances and it, it looks like a crystal, right? And um, so you say, okay, well that's a six megahertz crystal, so it probably has a harmonic at 18 megahertz, all right? So let's go here to 18 and there's a little hint of a bump there, but there's really not much going on here at all, right? So it has to do with the way the crystals are cut. Okay, their particular thickness and size and everything, they're made to resonate at a particular frequency. Let's go back to six. Let's go back to six. Um, and so this particular filter, uh, crystal, was said, uh, when they made it, they said, well, we want it to oscillate at six megahertz and nothing else, right? That's the only thing we want, we want this thing to do. Um, so let's take a look at, a, a, at another crystal, okay. This is a 27 megahertz crystal. And so we will, we will go here to 27 megahertz and take a look. And uh, so this crystal has an up and a down and it has an extra little spike there. I don't know what that's all about, but it does have a little extra spike there. So obviously mm, it's a little sloppier of a crystal or maybe it's designed that way. Maybe it's got something special going on, okay? Uh, Let's widen up uh, the sweep here a little bit. Look at that. It's got other modes of oscillation. So it's a, it's a three-dimensional object. So it can oscillate in X, Y, and Z, and maybe multiples of those. So it's got a whole bunch of funniness going on here, right? And so this particular crystal would allow you to operate at different frequencies, okay? So if you take 27 and you multiply it by three, you get 81. So let's go look at 81 megahertz. 81 megahertz, boom, it's starting to look like a crystal again. Remember the other one was completely suppressed at its third harmonic. Well, this one, uh, this one's looking, oops, the other way. I'll bring it down here a bit. Yeah, this one's looking pretty good. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on it a bit. And the interesting thing is that the third harmonic is a little sharp. It's a little longer. So if you play a stringed instrument and you know about harmonics, or if you play piano or you've tuned a piano, you know that harmonics are sharp. 
Um, it's the same thing in electronics. There's an extra capacitance, there's inductance and stuff, and the harmonics are always going to be a little sharp. I used to tune pianos, and they're really hard to tune. <laughs> um, so instead of 81, oh, that's too much. Let's see. Let's, let's go down here in frequency. See if I can sneak up on it. Yeah, there we go. I can sneak up on it. So it looks like it went from uh, 81, it's actually oscillating at 81.06, okay? And so if you were hoping to get 81, you might be disappointed, right? So when you buy crystals to be used at the third harmonic, you have to choose them wisely. You might, you might want to choose your fundamental a little flat because it's going to end up a little sharp. And so... Um, anyway, so one could easily build an oscillator with this particular crystal at 81 megahertz, even though it's a 27 megahertz crystal, right? All right. Um, so uh, that's enough about crystals. Let's go take a look at the circuit and how it's used. All right. So back to the uh, back to the circuit here. Um, I'm going to be looking at just just the oscillator section. The oscillator section is then followed by two amplifiers. So we're not going to be looking at that half of the board. We're only looking at this half of the board, right? So the schematic looks something like this, right? And so there's a transistor that's biased and it has the uh, emitter resistor and it has the AC bypass on it. So it, 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 it has nice DC uh, biasing, stable biasing, Plus, it has a, a, a low impedance to ground for, for, the, uh, uh, for the AC signal, which, which increases the gain of this. So it has nice gain. Um, it, has, it has a little bit of what maybe is, looks like feedback or something, three picofarad, maybe to kickstart it. Um, it then has an output section uh, that has an inductor. So usually, usually you just see this. Okay, so in a, like an audio amplifier, this would just be a resistor, but in, in, in RF land, it's usually a, an inductor. And then this wax up and down and, and, and it's capacitively coupled out. Okay, everything here is in picofarads. All the numbers are in picofarads. All right, um, so, so how do you get this to oscillate? Well, you need to do something to the base. You need to tickle the base, right? And so um, uh, this one, uh, if you just get rid of these two components, you have this... Uh, uh, you have this uh, capacitor out here, and you have an inductor. So, if you if you if you have the capacitance and inductance, that can set up resonance all by itself. You 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 don't need this crystal, okay? Um, and so, what if we remove the crystal, okay? So I'm going to do that. I found this very instructive. And so what I'm going to do is I have this little uh, this little short little piece of wire, and I'm going to go in. And I'm going to short the crystal out, okay? I'm going to put it right across the crystal leads, right? So I'm going to be shorting this out. So the circuit will then not have a crystal. It only will have this LC network, okay? Will it still work, all right? So again, I'm going to short those out. And let me show you on the scope. Uh, okay, here I'm going in, and I'm shorting it out. And look, it still oscillates. It's oscillating at a slightly different frequency. It's oscillating at 172 and a half instead of 177. Now I might be adding stray inductance or stray capacitance and stuff like that too. Um, but the circuit works perfectly fine without the crystal. So that's the thing, you, that's the takeaway, okay? It works great without the crystal, all right? All right, so. So why does it oscillate at a particular frequency? It oscillates because of this LC network, okay? This LC network is going to set up some type of resonance, okay? And so it will set up a, it will set up a resonance, a resonance peak, right? And the width of this uh, resonance peak is called the Q of the system, okay? If it's tinier, you, you have a good Q, and if it's bigger, you have a bad Q. Um, so how can we make a narrower a narrower Q. While we need really good controlled inductances and capacitances and stuff, and guess what? That's what crystals do. 
So by inserting this crystal, what you've done is you have, you already have one resonance, you already have one resonance peak, and you're going to add that to another resonance peak, okay? And so you've got this one, so it's already oscillating here at say 172, okay, all by itself. But then you introduce another filter over here, and that filter is at 177. Well, it knows how to do this oscillation, and now it sees, oh, wait a minute, I'm not allowed to do that. It won't pass through the circuit. The only thing that will pass through the circuit is this little uh, extra filter here, okay, that's in series. And so don't, that's where it locks onto. It won't go anywhere else, okay? And even though this crystal will resonate at 59, it doesn't matter because the, the, the original circuit was oscillating not at 59. If you, if, you, if you made these LCs to oscillate at 59, then yeah, it would lock up at 59. But what we're doing is we're, we're starting it out at 172 and then we're putting in the filter and uh, locking this down to 177. So that's the way the circuit works. Now, guess what? It's negative voltages and that just hurts my head. And guess what? This is a PNP. But if you, if you kind of ignored that when I was talking at the very, very beginning, it looked exactly like a plus circuit, but it's actually a minus circuit. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, uh, it, it's not, it's not doing, it's not using the minus voltages because of what Echo uses them for. Echo, Echo uses them to reduce the noise in a system. And, uh, that would mean that you'd have to, you'd have, to have ground here, um, and, and we don't. We have negative, ne anyway, uh, I don't want to get into that. Um, so I hope, I hope this really, really helps um, how the crystal is used and why, why it can be used. Um, it actually requires a special crystal, a crystal that's designed to be operated on its third, third harmonic. We saw that on the, uh, vector, on the uh, scalar network analyzer. And... Um, and then it's added to the circuit to uh, reduce the Q of the, uh, of the feedback here. All right, I better do something while I have it here uh, on the bench because somebody's gonna ask for it. Um, we adjusted this capacitor, we adjusted this one. This, this, one's, this one's trivial, this one just adjusts, adjusts the LC of the oscillator so you can, you can bend this crystal just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, but uh, this, other capacitor up here is a tuned circuit for the output, and it basically just peaks the output. Um, so I'm going to adjust this while we watch it on a scope. And so there it is on the scope. And let me adjust that, that output capacitor. It does not change the frequency; it just changes the uh, it changes the amplitude. You see the amplitude going down, and then disappearing, and then going up, and then disappearing the other direction. So somewhere in the middle is a happy maximum and it's just a it's just a tune circuit and it helps this uh helps this stage be stable and it helps maximum output on on the uh, on the output stage